Hi friends, Story Hilder, and welcome to my homestead. Medical preparedness on the homestead. What's the, what's the point of becoming more self-sustainable, more independent, if you're not medically prepared? You know, I really think that is the chink in a lot of people's armors. We are prepared with our wood. We're prepared with our water. We're prepared with our food in the pantry, right? What about holistically, health-wise, wellness-wise, emergency, trauma-wise? I don't have to get into the, the whole um, why we need to. We just need to. And that is why you're going to be seeing more of those medical preparedness videos. And this is one of them. We're going to be talking about something that is a silent killer. Yeah, you can be thin looking, you can be of normal weight, or you can be overweight, you can even actually be underweight, you can actually be an athlete and have this silent killer affect you. You know what it is? And it is blood pressure. Mm, yeah, as we're looking at my blood pressure cuff, blood pressure is a silent killer because most of the time there are no symptoms of blood pressure. You know, when you go into a hypertensive crisis, yeah, and your blood pressure is 200 over 120, okay, you might have a flushed face, you might feel really hot, you might be getting a headache, um, anxiety, okay. That's in a hypertensive crisis, but you could be walking around with, with essential hypertension, which is a blood pressure of, say, 150 over 90 or 99 every day. Uh, and and, and that, that blood is exerting that pressure on those artery walls, putting you at risk for stroke, for heart attack, for a lot of things that could kill you. That is why, medically, on your homestead, you need to be able to be prepared to fight blood pressure, high blood pressure, the risk of high blood pressure. And how do you do that? Well, it's easy. You get yourself a cuff. That's it. That's it. If you don't have a cuff right now in your home, you better go out and buy one. Now, what I'm first going to recommend with these cuffs is uh, there's many different types. There's a manual cuff, but you need somebody else to put it on, and you need a stethoscope so that they can palpate your pulse and listen. So it takes a little training to use a manual cuff. Wouldn't recommend it. You want something that's going to be easy that anybody can use, and that's why I recommend one of these cuffs. This is a full-size cuff that goes on the arm, and you can actually do it by yourself. Before I demonstrate, you'll also see that they sell wrist ones. I don't like the wrist ones, and I don't really recommend them as a nurse. I think they're not as accurate. And I know some doctor's offices are using the wrist ones, but I really feel a full cuff is a little bit more accurate. And the cost is, is very comparable. So if, if you have a choice and you want something that is going to be accurate, that you can use with a person or without a person, I would go with the full cuff arm blood pressure cuff. And you can buy these at Costco, Walmart, Target, uh, Walgreens, uh, Rite Aid. They run between $20 and $24, so they don't break the bank. They take a couple batteries in the back. Now the cuff is very self-explanatory. It has right on there the artery mark. And what you want to do is slide your arm into the cuff. I'm going to put this down here. And where that artery mark is, you're going to match it up with where your artery is right here. And you'll see the beauty of being able to do this by yourself. Then you're going to just snugly put it on your arm, just like that. And then you're going to push the button. Now, 
let me point out a couple things as this is as this is um, inflating. Take your blood pressure at the same time every day, preferably in the morning. During the day, if you've been running around, if you ate a meal, if you drank some coffee, your blood pressure is going to be, the reading is going to be high. And sometimes it's not going to be reflective of where your blood pressure really is at. So I would suggest doing it in the morning before you eat and before you drink. The other thing is make sure your legs are uncrossed when you do your blood pressure. The nice thing about this cuff, and I'm going to show you now, this is the middle of the day I'm taping and I'm kind of like jacked up. <laughs> My blood pressure, look at that, 153 over 88. And I just sat down, I was running around, and my heart rate is actually 60, which is really high because my heart rate is usually in the 40s. Am I panicking over this? No, I'm not panicking over this because, yeah, I just ate. I just got done running around outside, and it is 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That is why you need to take your blood pressure at the same time every day, preferably in the morning. Start writing it down. Now, if you start having consistent readings where that bottom number, that diastolic number, there's a systolic and diastolic, the bottom is called the diastolic, is consistently high. And high meaning over 60, 70, 80, 90. And that top number, the systolic, which should be running you know, 120, 130, starts getting up there like 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 200 then it's time to go see the doctor. Now, let's talk about seeing the doctor because I know people freak out and they're like, but Starry, we don't like the doctor. They're, they're, they're against us. No, the doctors are not against you. And all they're gonna do is prescribe a pill, but sometimes some people need medication management when it comes to blood pressure. But I want to point this out. Number one, blood pressure is manageable without medication, but takes some work. Um, I had a bout with high blood pressure and this is when I was racing, very physically fit. You would have never guessed. They did every test in the world and what ended up happening was I was putting so much stress on my body with racing. I was in a state of con con constant uh, catabolism. Things were breaking down. My muscle was breaking down and I wasn't drinking enough and hydrating. So I put a strain on my kidneys, which puts a strain on your blood pressure and I had high blood pressure. For me, it was revisiting good nutrition, hydrating, and, and not stopping uh, training, uh, but being a little bit kinder to my body. But you would have never known that I had high blood pressure. Now, that's why I'm saying you could be of normal weight and you could have high blood pressure. Did I have to take um, blood pressure medications? At one time, I did. It was to the point where I did everything right and it still wasn't coming down. So I had to take my blood pressure every day and I also had to take some lisinopril, a very low dose. But then after a while, I revisited my diet again and again and really fine-tuned it. And then I was okay. But every now and then, my blood pressure will go a little high and I can see it reflected because of some of the foods that I'm grabbing. Sometimes I'll eat a little bit too much salt. Salt is a killer. Salt is a killer for blood pressure. And we so overlook it because we're grabbing, oh, we're gonna go eat at Subway because you know, what's that guy's name who lost all that weight, right? You know, he eats Subway and he's, he's healthy, uh, probably has a very high sodium level and may have high blood pressure. He may have lost weight, but in the, in the end, he may ha end up uh, giving himself hypertension because any foods like processed meat and cheese, uh, smoked fish, sardines, anything, um, Pre-packaged lean cuisine. Oh yeah, lean cuisine. We're gonna lose weight. So high in sodium. Ramen noodles. Remember ramen noodles. Sodium, killer for blood pressure. So in order to control that blood pressure and to keep it down and to not put yourself at risk, you gotta get rid of the salt. Table salt. You should never ever have table salt anywhere in reach. Period. Shouldn't add table salt because because one table teaspoon tablespoon of table salt is a lot, a lot. And foods are already naturally 
um, you know, they're, they're naturally flavored. If you're using your herbs and you're, you're cooking fresh and green and you're using all the colors, you shouldn't have to worry. You know, am I really big on supplements? Um, some supplements, yes. Some supplements, I think they overdo it. A uh, good old-fashioned remedy for high blood pressure, they say, is uh, apple cider vinegar. Put a little honey in there. Uh, there's all of that, but there is no medical proof uh, that apple cider vinegar and honey uh, really does help lower your blood pressure. But there is proof that changing your diet and getting rid of the sodium will do that. The other thing is lose some weight. Uh, if you don't have, uh, you know, you could be, again, uh, of, of regular weight or even underweight, and then you have to look at your diet and your stress levels. Uh, but if you're overweight, there, that right there, you got to start with losing that weight because as, as soon as you lose weight, that blood pressure will start going down. Um, the other thing is, I just mentioned stress. Stress. It's a killer. And we don't think we have stress. Oh, we don't think we have stress until we look at the numbers. Yeah. That's why I take, start taking that blood pressure every day. And when you get up in the morning like I do, read the Bible, pray, talk to God, release that stress, turn it over to Him. you got to have something. And for me, it's, it's, it's God. Um, for people who don't have God, whatever that is, you have to find it uh, because if you don't have peace of mind, that's what kills you. Stress kills. It's powerful. It affects us. And the last thing is exercise. I know no one wants to hear about exercising, but yes, you have to exercise. And that doesn't mean 15 to 30 minutes a day. You really need to do something more um, sustainable to get your heart rate up. And it also doesn't mean going out in the garden. That's not exercise. It doesn't mean just hauling some rock or plowing or shoveling snow. That's not exercise. That is hard work. It's not exercise. And this I have to differentiate because there is this belief that if you live off grid and you have a homestead and you're a farmer, um, you, you know you shouldn't have problems with blood pressure and you should be of healthy weight. How many farmers and people who live off the grid have you seen that are overweight? A lot of them who aren't healthy. A lot of them. Well, but they, they're exercising every day. They're cutting wood. That's not exercise. Exercise is sustainable exercise activity like biking, running, walking fast for a sustained period of time where your heart rate is above your resting heart rate. Now, you may be huffing and puffing when you're cutting wood, but you're not doing that for 45 to 50 minutes to an hour, right? Join a, join a spin class. Go to Tai Bo. Um, you learn jiu-jitsu. Um, take a swimming. Um, go to the gym and swim. Sustainable activity. That's what you need to do. All right. That is Starry's uh, Homesteading Medical Preparedness Blood Pressure. Short and sweet, but in your medical bag, friends, that's what you got to get. And uh, I want to hear some feedback. If you got a cuff, I want to hear what your numbers are. I want to hear what you're seeing. And then this is the other thing. One last thing. If you are prescribed something like lisinopril um, or, or some of the other, there, there's so many different types of, of, of uh, blood pressure lowering medications, don't stop taking it. Okay? There is a way to get off of those medications. But remember, there are people that have tried everything and they still need blood pressure medication. Blood pressure medication is not going to kill you. It's going to save your life. In fact, I had a, a lady tell me that she was prescribed blood pressure medication and she stopped taking it and she has all the stress in her life and her blood pressure is running 200 over whatever, 90. I'm like, take your blood pressure medication. Obviously, you can't eliminate the stress in your life right now. Well, you're going to have a stroke. So take your lisinopril. Take your hydrochlorothiazide. Um, really, uh, I'm not a big advocate of medications all the time. But you know what? A cup of, of, of green tea isn't going to do it for you if it's that high. Okay, there's a time and a reason and a purpose for medications. So don't stop taking it. Make those changes. And then hopefully you can get off of the, um, the, the medication. But if you're on it and it's working, stay on it. 
And here's one other thing. Just remember, for those of you who are on blood pressure medication, it's really imperative that you take your blood pressure every day because just because the doctor ordered you 10 milligrams of a blood pressure medication, maybe you have lost a little weight and now your blood pressure is running low. And you're taking that blood pressure pill every day and you're not realizing it because you're getting kind of lightheaded and dizzy and you're wondering, what's going on here? I'm not feeling so well. Maybe you shouldn't be taking that pill anymore. Okay, or maybe your blood pressure has gone up because you gained some more weight or, you know, you've kind of been cheating, you're not exercising anymore, and you need more blood pressure medication until you start controlling what you need to control. That is why this cuff is going to save your life, even if you're on blood pressure medication. It needs to be monitored. All right, Starry Hilder, off the grid, giving you some medical advice that will save you from the silent killer.